Memories are colorful and diverse, but also fleeting and transient. Sometimes we see them blurred, sometimes crystal clear. If you're unlucky, they simply disappear at some point. If you're lucky, you still have Super 8 films from earlier times and can make your memories visible again. And it's really luck to have real film stock. Because an old film is not just like a video cassette, a magnetic signal with a small SD resolution that you can't change much. It's a series of images that can be digitized badly or really well, depending on the equipment and knowledge you're using. And so we begin our journey to find the best digitization method for our memories. There are some obstacles along the way. After all, there are different ways to digitize that are hard to evaluate. The first thing you encounter are the very low-cost film scanners that digitize frame by frame, but with cheap industrial cameras. The films run about 10 times as long as they do when projected, and the results have strong compression artifacts and unnatural colors. When we consider how much love and care we put into the original Cine film recordings back then, it doesn't live up to our standards. Actually, the modern cameras that many of us already use for photography or filming have many more possibilities and much better quality. With Film Digital Super 8 Transfer System, we can use all photo cameras that have an interchangeable lens and a video mode, as well as all modern film cameras. So it would be a good idea to use a camera that we already like to use for other occasions when filming and taking pictures. So perhaps the digitization of the old films will also be an occasion to get a new camera. And once you have a camera and maybe even a projector, the cost of the transfer system is kept in check. As all you really need is a high quality lens that can reproduce film grain and a good LED system. In this case, with brightness and color temperature control. For those who consider photography and filming equally important, there are hybrid cameras. One camera series that's very well known for just that is the Panasonic Lumix GH. These cameras, whether GH4, GH5, GH5S, GH5 Mark II, or now the all-new GH6, are great for digitizing Super 8 film. And that's why we're taking a closer look at the GH6 today. The cameras, just like most Blackmagic film cameras, have one huge advantage, a freely selectable shutter speed. That means that you can set the camera shutter to 1 54th of a second and you can run the projector at 18 frames per second. In the Panasonic Lumix GH series, this function can be found under Synchro Scan. Then the projector speed no longer needs to be modified to 16 and 2 thirds. If you're using cameras where this is not possible, Film Digital, of course, also offers projectors that are pre-configured to 16.66 frames, and that can be set very precisely with a speed controller. We'd like to make visible the traces we've left in our lives, but not the wear marks on our films. Every time we play the film in the projector, especially if it's not maintained, the film suffers more wear. Our memories are so precious to us that we definitely don't want to let that happen. It's just as important that when digitizing, the already existing streaks and scratches are not emphasized, but minimized. This only works with diffuse light from a sophisticated LED light source, and such light sources are available at Film Digital. They're adjustable in brightness, but also in color temperature. You can adjust the light to be a little more yellow or a little more blue directly during digitizing. Once the lens and LED are mounted and adjusted in the projector, then we can take a few steps back into our past. 
We want to achieve everything possible in terms of quality while still optimizing the result in post-processing. We record the movie with the following settings. As the speed of the projector, we choose 18 frames per second. As a setting in the camera, the shutter speed should be 1 54th of a second under synchro scan and if possible, a frame rate of 50p is important. We leave the white balance fixed to sun or outside, but with the GH6, we can adjust this preset conveniently via a color panel. We want to record a QuickTime movie file to avoid deteriorating the result with strong compression. Many possibilities are offered by the new photo styles of the GH6. It's always good to choose a flat color profile with a high dynamic range so that later you can grade the colors even better in the computer. The GH6 is the first Panasonic GH camera that can display the V-Log to its full extent. The new Dynamic Range Boost mode also promises a high dynamic range of more than 13 stops. However, it requires at least 800 ISO. Another innovation is the video resolution of 5.7K and the high resolution image sensor of 25.4 megapixels required for it, the largest of all MFT cameras. We choose a high resolution of 4K because we still want to use individual still images from the recorded video clip later to make a photo album. The print resolution at 300 dpi reaches up to nearly 49 centimeters in width with this camera in video mode. So theoretically, you can print DINA3 without any problems. However, since the grain is often very visible with Super 8, we like this smaller version better with stills of 10 by 15 centimeters in print. The best print result is achieved by first shooting the film at a high resolution and then downsampling the stills. Since we're shooting in real time, the digitization is done quickly. The result already looks good, but it's not yet mirrored, the edges are not yet smoothed, and we want to optimize the file even more. Here's why. There can be single frames that look like double exposures due to the rotating wing shutter in the projector. You don't see them when you play the movie, but they're noticeable when you click through the frames. And now we want to remove those frames without loss. That's why we recently introduced an automated post-processing system that is now available at Film Digital. Customers who already have the system can also get the software package from Film Digital. You'll need a Windows computer and must install the free open source software Virtual Dub. Using a text editor, you enter the name of the file to be processed and values for the edge trimming. The mirroring and the creation of the correct frame rate are already preset. Simply drag the closed script file into the opened Virtual Dub application. Choose values for compression and output file and then the rendering begins either a single file or a queue. While the final files are rendering in the queue, we can take a break and relax. And the result convinces us. It really is now the case that one frame from the original film also results in one frame in the final file with no double exposure or ghosting. It almost looks as if we had photographed frame by frame with a very good camera. The result shows us that the Panasonic Lumix GH series is ideally suited for digitization with the film digital system and post-processing via Virtual Dub. At the end of the journey, we sit there and see our old films from a whole new perspective. Digital, available at any time, copyable for friends and family, and in top quality. If you'd like to have more information about the Film Digital System, please visit our online shop at www.filmdigital.com. 
or register for our free webinar.